Hi guys, welcome to Adam at Collar TV. I'm Adam. So this weekend we had the first Manchester United game under Jose Mourinho. It was a 2-0 victory at the DW Stadium. It felt so good to be back on Mont State singing songs and all that stuff. That comes with following Manchester United. And of course, United got a victory as well. 2-0. The performances and the results aren't the main thing in pre-season. Of course, we want to see good football. Of course, we want to see players scoring goals. But... The main thing is fitness in pre-season. Jose Mourinho seemed happy on the sidelines from some of the things that he saw from his Manchester United players as well, despite only having a week or two's training session with the team. And with only half the squad as well, the Euro 2016 players weren't there. The 2-0 victory came, a clean sheet, a few goals, happy days. And now we move on to the China Tour where we'll face Dortmund and Manchester City. But enough of that for now. Zlatan Ibrahimovic has been talking and he's responded to the comments of the king, Eric Cantona. You remember his comments? You can be the prince of Manchester and all that stuff. Well, he's come out and he's said, he's responded in typical Zlatan style. I heard what Cantona said. I won't be king of Manchester. I will be god of Manchester. Now that's very, very Zlatan-like. And I tweeted this morning as well once I heard that saying, oh no, please do something first. And that was mainly in response to the Cantona part of his point. We know Zlatan Ibrahimovic is arrogant. We know he's going to come out with comments like that. It's partly of the reason why we love him so much. And a lot of people do love him as well. And although I do want him to prove himself on the pitch before he says things like that, because it could all look very silly if he doesn't do it on the pitch. He has done it everywhere he has been. And some could say he deserves to be arrogant. If any player can be arrogant, surely it's Zlatan Ibrahimovic because he's done it everywhere he's been. Still a great comment. And Zlatan, I know you're watching. I know you subscribe, mate. Cantona's the king. Just remember that. And then we move on to Andreas Pereira, who played in the game against Wigan. He came on as a second half substitute and he played in an unfamiliar position. Now, we know we can play central midfield, but he played a deeper central midfield role. It seemed like he was in between the defence and the, the midfielders um, further ahead of him. And he played fantastically well there, keeping possession, passing the ball around, scoring an incredible goal, a few decent runs as well. And Andreas Pereira is one of my favourite young players at Manchester United. I've been saying Timothy Fosu, Mensa, Andreas Pereira, they are the ones for me. And I'd love Andreas Pereira to get an opportunity um, in this season in at Manchester United under Jose Mourinho because I really believe he has the potential to do well. Incredible football in brain, great ability to pass and move. He can score goals as well, take free kicks, corners, etc. He's a very, very handy player to have. And if he can get game time this season, I'm sure he'll prove himself as someone that can stick around Manchester United for a little bit longer. He needs that game time though. He obviously signed that contract under Louis van Gaal, but never got any football after that. So hopefully his performance against Wigan means he gets a few more opportunities out in the pre-season tour and can hopefully prove himself to Jose Mourinho. But Andres Pereira is definitely, for me, one to watch. I think it's the year of Timothy Fosu Mensa, but I like Pereira and I'd be gutted to see him sent away on loan or sold because I really do think he has that huge talent that we need to nurture at Old Trafford. Also this week as well, um, we'll end on this one because it's been absolutely everywhere. The Manchester United home kit for 2016-17 has been leaked left, right and centre. Now, I remember last year the same thing happened. I was out in America and um, the kits hadn't been announced yet. But I seen people wearing the home kit, the away kit and the third kit. And I was like, where the hell have you got these from? And they were buying them in sports outlets all around, all over the place. So they obviously haven't learnt their lesson, Adidas or Man United or whoever it is. And the kit has been leaked left, right and centre, as you can see, all over the world. So it's quite obvious what the Manchester United home kit will look like for next season. I like it. Um, I like it with the three stripes underneath the arm. I know it's a little bit weird. And if you would have told me that first, that there's no stripes on the arm, it's beneath the arm, I would have thought, hey, that's weird. But looking at it, it looks quite nice. And the two-tone red as well. It's a really nice kit. And I'm looking forward to seeing the players hopefully be successful in this kit because it really is nice and it kind of reminds me of the kit from 2008 when we won the European Cup. Guys, um, it still hasn't stopped the Manchester United Twitter account and website pretending like nobody has seen it and I'm sure they'll be doing that all the way up to the build-up. Guys, we've seen it already. You may as well just put it out for sale, man. 
Anyway, thank you for joining me today, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let us know what you thought about Zlatan Ibrahimovic's God of Manchester comment. What you think about Andres Pereira as well. Will he, should he get an opportunity under Jose Mourinho this season? And of course, what do you think about the new home kit for the upcoming season? We know what it looks like. Get your thoughts in below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you later.